Hello everybody, this is Kai Pacha with the Weekly Pele Report and uh, it is Wednesday, as usual, <laughs> September 28th of 2022 and I can't wait to just finish this report and jump in the river. <laughs> anyway, the moon is in Scorpio, little water action going on, she's there conjoining with the south node of the moon and then she is going to be moving into Sagittarius on Thursday uh, in the meantime uh, the good news for today is what Mars trine Saturn Mars trine Saturn Gemini to Aquarius we've got some air going on right Sun in Libra Venus moves into Libra tomorrow Thursday so we've got a lot of air going on around here. I won't tell you the joke that I just heard about air signs, but uh, yeah, yeah, there's a, that, that is going on. And by Saturday, she is going to be opposite Jupiter. Now, what I really want to point out, and you may be able to see it in that uh, chart beforehand, is that the, uh, there's a grand cross formed by the moon uh, when the moon gets uh, up there into Sagittarius late Sagittarius okay uh, it's going to oppose Mars and square Mercury which is opposite Neptune so Mercury is coming to a nice station finally going direct it seems like we've had Mercury retrograde for too long <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, it is going to station direct at 24 degrees opposite Neptune at 23 Mars is down there at 20 Gemini and the moon will be up there you know going through the 20s of Sag uh, on Saturday so powerful day October 1st powerful day whoosh and, you know, and then things move on. I mean, the, the moon is in Capricorn coming to her first quarter, okay, on Sunday at 9 degrees 47 minutes of Capricorn. I'm going to read you that Sabian symbol. Very beautiful. And, you know, she moves on and squares Jupiter, Venus, and the sun on Sunday, okay, uh, you know, and then moves on into uh, Aquarius by Tuesday so let me look at the camera and make sense out of all that astro babble okay so what's going on with you out there <laughs> well there's a few things that are going on with all of us and we want to talk about that today we want to talk about I, I, I really this Venus transiting Okay, into Libra, coming into this opposition with Jupiter. It's, it is a powerful time. It's probably about six months ago that Venus was conjunct Jupiter. So we're at that full moon kind of uh, energy with Venus Jupiter. And what is Venus Jupiter? I mean, it is the expansion of the heart. It's the expansion of love. It is optimism with regard to love and finances and sense of self-worth and relationships and it, it, so it is and it's an understanding Jupiter is you know expanding our consciousness around just what love is and also what well the opposition the opposition can bring in a lot of different things and very often when you see it in a natal chart or by transit okay Jupiter opposing Venus uh, it, it has to do with wanting too much, going for too much, overextending, overspending. You know, the advice is not to really, uh, you know, sign, you know, not to really be buying big ticket items right now. <laughs> I mean, it, obviously it is a mirror of the inflation that is happening. And, uh, you know, all of the economic kind of energy. I'm going to be actually be doing a whole workshop on money for the first time ever. <laughs> but, yeah. 
money is energy and we're going to have to be uh, dealing a little bit, you know, a little bit. We're going to be dealing a lot and a lot of you already are. I know I am, okay? I mean, this is like so many lives are affected and those lives being affected, you know, with regard to finances is also affecting their relationships and partnerships. You know, people staying together that might otherwise split if they had enough money or people, you know, you know, that would come together if they could, you know, get that plane ticket <laughs> or blah, 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 blah. there are so many variables happening. But this is really also a situation of sometimes it can also be where you want more out of a relationship than you're getting. And it's interesting with this Mercury in opposition with Neptune at the same time, you know, this whole, this whole weekend, both of these are happening as Mercury stations opposite Neptune. That's not a good time for clear communication. Neptune is the planet of deception, of fantasies and illusions and, you know, I thought this, it's also the planet that wants to show us our illusions through disillusionment. So I'd say this is a major adjustment happening here as the sun moves through Libra and as, Vir, you know, as Mercury moves through Virgo wanting to straighten things out, you know, straighten things up, clarify. We really need <laughs> this Mercury in Virgo right now some grounding, okay, to all of the Neptune in Pisces, Jupiter in Aries, Venus in Libra, Sun in Libra, wow, Moon in Scorpio right now. I mean, this is like, this is like a real whirlwind. But I'm, I'm, I, I am very excited. This is very interesting to be reading for you today the Sabian symbol. I'm going to read you Dane Rudyard's this uh, uh, today because I relate to that more. And uh, it is an albatross feeding from the hand of a sailor. The keynote is the overcoming of fear and its rewards. The man who radiates perfect harmlessness can call the wildest creatures to him and can establish with them a partnership based on mutual respect and understanding. Every living entity plays a role in the world's ritual of existence. Beyond these specific roles, which too often separate one entity from another, the communion of love and compassion can bring together the most disparate lives. Here we are presented with a picture extending the ideal of peace and happiness through culture. So it now includes all living organisms on this planet. The power of such a culture of harmlessness and compassion generates trust everywhere. And so this is where I need to deviate from our regularly scheduled program <laughs> of astrology for the soul that is about I try to make this report individual. I try to make the mantras for you to carry forward for your own evolutionary self-knowledge and growth. I try not to get too caught up and distracted with the larger world affairs. But even today, in this Sabian symbol, Dane Rudyard is talking about a culture, a harmless culture. And here's where I just have to say, we are not living in a harmless culture. We are living during a transitional period where the forces of darkness 
and the forces of light are coming into an interaction. And it's threatening. It's threatening not only our psyche with the, the wetico and the mass formation, okay? I, we have Neptune in the closing deacon of Scorpio in the sign of Pisces. The third deacon of Pisces is Scorpio, yeah? And we have it there for the next couple of years. And this is brainwashing. This is, okay, just like propaganda. And when it's in opposition to Mercury, these forces are extremely powerful. So I'm going to expand this out a little bit and I'm gonna say, guess what? If you don't know already, the United States was born on July 4th of 1776 with Pluto at 27 degrees of Capricorn, and it is going through its first Pluto return. 248 years, 250, Pluto has gone all the way around. The exact dates with the retrograding of Pluto, it first came in February 20th, retrograded July 11th, and is coming back for its third pass, December 28th. But I'm gonna say, and I always say, a Pluto transit takes three years over a specific point in the chart. So we can say all of 21, all of 22, and all of 23. Pluto is coming through the United States chart as a death and a resurrection, as a death of an old government and the birth of a new government next year. And it's just, you know, no accident that we also have, okay, you know, the eclipses occurring right around the uh, election, yes? And sadly, it's only a midterm election. <laughs> And, and it's not the president, uh, we, can't get, we can't get him out of there, yeah? But what we can look at and say, and that is not the only thing going on with that chart. I mean, uh, you know, it's also having its progressed moon return, exact, September 26th. It's also having uh, transiting Uranus square the natal moon of the United States. This is very, uh, applicable to what I want to be talking about. Uranus squaring the moon. The moon is the public. Uranus is artificial intelligence, technology, science, the future. And it is squaring the general public. This is tension producing. And it's time to that where the public needs to wake up. And that is happening all the way from July of 22 through April of 23. And just what I, what I really want to bring out today is the executive order that President Biden signed last month in September. It's the executive order on advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing innovation for a sustainable safe and secure American bioeconomy. I, I can forward you a whole article on this or I could put a link to it okay down down below. but this 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 article is basically uh, paving the way, okay? This executive order. So we know that the executive branch of the United States of America has been swallowed, okay, by what we could call the dark forces. Because this is all about transhumanism. This is all about rolling out, reducing the testing, reducing the time period, giving the pharmaceutical companies a green light an open field, an open runway to develop these technologies to inject, yes? So now they are already designing flu shots with mRNA. 
and the cancer therapies. Okay, they're doing gene therapy and they're wanting, you know, gene therapy to basically replace allopathic medicine. You know, we're, we're just going to, you know, give you a shot that's going to get rid of all your problems. Only in the meantime, there's going to be a little nanotechnology in there that's going to be doing more than the abhorrible messing with our DNA. It's also going to be making us trackable, making us through our smartphones, through every other forms of identification. I will put a link down below to Sorrel. Sorrel gave, uh, you know, uh, an excellent description of the three pillars upon which this whole fourth uh, industrial revolution is all about and what's going on with the WEF and everything else. And the United States of America is at the forefront of this movement. Okay, and so, you know, as the, the reincarnated Atlantis that it is, <laughs> yeah, you know, we have this, this forward progressiveness happening in the United States. I just want to read to you one little quote from that executive order. It is to write circuitry for cells and, predictable, and predictably program biology in the same way in which we write software and program computers. Make no mistake about it. There is a surge, okay, you know, uh, and, and rapid expansion of underlying secret. This is Mercury opposite Neptune. Neptune working behind the scenes in Pisces with this collective unconscious, okay? And it is stirring up, and it's stirring up the economy, and it's stirring up the medical field, and it's stirring up the governments, it's stirring up everything. And there is an intention behind it. And this intention is not for the rights and the freedom and the empowerment of individuals that make up the society and the culture that we live in today. So this is a very dangerous time period that we live in. And it's very, you know, beautiful that, you know, this particular uh, Sabian symbol, you know, it points to trust. And it is our need to trust ourselves and our need to trust each other because we need to make plans to extricate ourselves from the matrix. And that's going to require a lot of courage, a lot of strength. And the more of us there are, the better. And as, as you know, the sheep, it's even in the book of Revelations, it's the, it's the parting of the sheep go on the right hand side and the goats go on the left hand side. We know who the sheep are, okay? You know, they have acquiesced to Wetico. They have sacrificed, okay, their future. And we need some stubborn goats. <laughs> yeah, baby, I'm talking to you, yes. <laughs> We need some bah, some stubborn goats. No, I'm not going down that road. I'm not following. Uh, 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 uh. I'm taking another timeline, okay? I'm, we're ascending here. There's gonna be a descent and there's gonna be an ascent. The albatross will, you know, feed and fly. <laughs> we need to feed and fly during this time. So yes, it's interesting, you know, that we have, on the one hand, in a personal way, this is quite the time period where many people are having a good time and many people are feeling like, oh yeah, the worst is over and thank God that's behind us and oh, there's not going to be another this, that or the other thing. Let me tell you. We are at the very, very, very beginning. In fact, we could say that it's only been maybe a, 
you know, a testing psyop that has been occurring through the last couple of years in comparison to what is coming up. So we want to dig in, we want to stay firm, we want to center ourselves, and we want to build solid, trusting relationships with people that we can count on, that we can share with, our assets, our food, our dreams, our future. Uh, you know, we want to begin to network. And we want to begin, okay, to really disperse our assets and pull our assets out of the mainstream. And you will see that if you listen to Sorrell's video that I will give you a link to in the notes. Yeah? So we really, you know, we need to be very careful with a Mercury opposite Neptune to not fall prey to someone who is out there saying, oh yes, here's all that you've dreamed of and all that you've ever wanted and we've got a plan for the future and it's going to be great and you're going to be happy, blah, 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 blah. Do not fall. That's what the mantra for today is about. Yeah? That's why we really need to come into an understanding that the surface is deceptive. And with these nodes in Taurus Scorpio, this is a time where we need to dig. We need to check, double check, and triple check our sources, where we're coming from, and who we are confiding in. Yeah? Through thick and thin, and highs and lows. One thing remains crystal clear. I, that, that I need to investigate, research, and dig for the truth I hold so dear. You, you know what I'm talking about. I can do more on, on, on this in a, in a separate uh, video because there is so much to go into and of course I have to be aware of censoring. Um, I don't even know if this is going to make it up and out but we'll see and yes you know in the meantime you know this, I, I didn't even talk about you know Mars moving through Gemini. Gemini is technology it is gadgets, it is business, it is commerce, and yes, it is enshrined to the Saturn up there in Aquarius. And Saturn has a hold. Saturn has a grip. Saturn is external authority asserting, okay, itself through Gemini, our daily reality, okay, in a harmful way. This can be the negative interpretation of Mars. And Mars is doing its retrograde all the way back through Gemini and then forward through Gemini again. And we just want to be very aware, yes, you know, of the silver-tongued devil, yeah, with the two, yeah, Gemini the twins, one foot in heaven, one foot in hell, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, we are becoming aware of maybe these pulls within ourselves that draw us down to our lower chakras and the other pull pulling us up to our higher chakras and we're just really needing it's not only externally okay where the light is meeting the dark it's also internally in each one of us and 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 the way forward is with courage and it's based on intention intention. I can't stress that word enough. Hold the intention of growth, goodness, love, evolution, self-discovery, intimate connection. And as you hold that intention, 
of learning about yourself and learning about the world and, the, and you know, what we need to do in order to survive. As you hold that intention and you have your conversations, some of them which may be unpleasant, because to break Wetico, we need to assert our truth. And the truth is upsetting at this time. And so we need to really be strong within ourselves. This is the healing of Chiron and Aries. You know, every time you assert your truth and you speak your truth, you know, and, and you really keep the conversation alive and we talk about the elephant in the room, you're taking a step towards healing that wounded warrior within yourself. I know, I did it at the bank just the other day. <laughs> I got that guy all upset. He said he was gonna file a report on me <laughs> as a suspicious character. Who, I, I, whatever. I just wanted to know what the heck they were, you know, what they were reporting. And so now I'm getting, no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's not get personal here. We wanna just really be in a place Yes, as that moon is now in Scorpio, I'm giving you this message, but she's going to go up through Sag into Capricorn. She's going to conjunct Pluto on Monday. Okay, so yeah, there is this, you know, we're in this first quarter moon. It's really new things emerging, new things stepping out. So let your power grow. And the, today's song, I wanted to be like rolling down the river with Ike and Tina Turner, man. Because let's, you know, let's balance out the joy. The Venus opposite Jupiter can be a wonderful time and great connection with so many people. And we want to stay in a positive attitude. We want to stay in the light through all of this challenge. And that's what's really going to make the difference, yeah? So the mantra one more time is that through thick and thin and highs and lows, one thing remains crystal clear. <laughs> that I need to investigate, research and dig for the truth I hold so dear. May you dig down inside yourself. May you dig down into the web or wherever you get your information or the latest books or da 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 May you dig into those conversations and find that truth for yourself. Namaste. Aloha. So much. Lots of things. Yeah. So much strength. So much courage so much perseverance, so much tolerance. Could really fill in that last word with a lot of different ones. But today, we'll just close with so much love.